Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I am Socio Psycho and today we take a look at Full Bore. This is created by Whole Hog Games, now on Steam for $15. It is a 2D 16-bit graphic style game with Linux support. And it is an interesting concept and nature of a game. Usually I like to play games a lot longer than I have with this one, but the base mechanics in this game are so very simplistic that playing it for hours and hours and hours upon a time really won't give me any insight unless there's some secret hidden thing that changes the game six hours in but at that point what's the point of playing a game with six hours to have something change later on so let us jump in ladies and gentlemen and look at the game now the title screen is a little bit lacking so once you get into a the game then it actually brings up a options menu which is a bit backwards I think but whatever when we go into the options itself you have configured controls you can rebind everything if you truly desire to which is nice you also have a volume setting which affects the sound and the music the music is sort of a blues style mid tempo slash retro feel to it you may enjoy it or you may not it's up to you for graphics, for your graphic decisions, you have low res mode or enable vSync. That is pretty much it. And now, when it comes to the game itself, I haven't had any issues with tearing or lag or anything else. It's a pretty simplistic game. You should not have any issues running it. Unless your computer is just ages old. I've been playing at 1920 by 1080 screen resolution with no issues on that matter. And then you just have credits, you turn to the screen, and exit the game. So let us go into the game and actually say what this is. Now, the concept of the story behind the game is actually pretty weak. The game itself doesn't have anything all that amazing to it story-wise. You are put into a mine and tossed into a workforce that you really don't want to be in. Now, the whole basis of this game is pretty much just to dig and find gems. It is a puzzle-style game, and it's a puzzle-style with really no fail concept to it because the level design which there are about a hundred levels or so and there are many parts of those levels which are hidden throughout this world it is 2d and so you hop up on the background boxes to get to where you need to but you have to do things in a certain order or find unlock other parts of different maps before you can come back and complete the one part you're looking for the game's puzzle element is not all that difficult it requires just simply looking at what's available and downright this game is actually just quite boring now why it's boring is because it doesn't matter how far you go in the basis of a game stays the same so you're doing really the same menial tasks over and over again with no sense of accomplishment in most platformers you're accomplishing jumps progressing in a story you feel propelled by the game to push yourself further and further in with this it's like being trapped in a labyrinth or a maze you're there and you have to deal with it there's really no incentive in this game even an incentive to get out of a mines which leaves you with a sense of entrapment not involvement and at least for me it did not propel me to want to go further into the world at all as far as uh, platformers go your jumping capability is solely bound strictly by your keyboard you have to press w and d or w and a to jump onto one of the background boxes to get where you need to go there is no free jump style which sort of limits your character in a very unfortunate way let's look at the inventory here and it's confusing this is the overview map that they show you of the world i guess you can get a good feel of where you are but it's still there's a lot of wasted empty space in between. It's really unneeded. And when we go into inventory, obviously inventory is your inventory. The game has no story element to it to push you forward like some platformers do desire to have. Even a basis. The platforming element is not so much as a jump over these spikes or jump over this pit. It's more of a find the correct box to jump upon to get higher. Dig through a dirt pile to try to get a gem. If I had to compare this game to anything, I would put this game as a base concept flunk of Terraria. You can dig only where they want you to, and you're limited to how you solve a problem. It is a puzzle game slash platformer with very limited and restrictive platforming, and a puzzle element to it which isn't all that difficult to figure out, on top of the rewind concept that if you ever fail a mission or a point, or you get yourself trapped into a corner you can just simply rewind 
I can see the enjoyment of this mechanic. You dig yourself into a corner and you can't get out because the other mechanics don't work well to get you out of a situation because there's no wall jumping, swing to one side of a wall to the other, back to the other to get out of a pit. Because the platforming element of a game is so lackluster, they put in a rewind mechanic. Now this rewind mechanic doesn't add anything really positive to the game. It makes the game more limited because it takes away a failure aspect. You cannot fail in this game. You can always continue to rewind your progress to find where you need to be, to find the correct path. How do I get to this gem? Try route one. Nope, that didn't work. All right, rewind your what you've done, try again. Now I can completely understand why there's mechanics in a game to begin with. Their platforming elements of a game are actually quite weak and it makes sense that they would fill this in as sort of a line to the player to make up for that. But it takes away from more of the aspects of the game instead of having a more direct flushed out platforming system. Because when we look at it, the platforming is actually just weak in the game. There's no other way to describe it. And when we analyze how the puzzles feel, the puzzles are just boring. If you tr if you fail in one aspect of attempting a puzzle, rewind and try again. It adds no level of depth. It has no failure possibility, and it doesn't make you feel like anything's on stakes. You always have an unlimited supply via the checkpoints, and they have checkpoints in the game on top of it. So it doesn't make sense to hold your hand pretty much in, oh, well, you died, so we're going to let you rewind. Oh, you messed up. Why should I not just, because of my failure, go back to the checkpoint? Or why is there not mechanics to allow me to find a workaround? It's just the game does not have that level of depth to it, and it tries to throw this concept in here to bridge that, which actually just takes away from it, and if you look at it, it actually makes the gap in between the mechanics and the level design even more apparent. Now the game does have secret areas like this, go in and find out what's going on, but how is this really like, let's jump down here. Nope, there is no failure system. I made a mistake, and we immediately have to just rewind. There is never any failure. So what are these? Little waypoints. It's a way to get around the world in a s secret matter. But it does not offer anything that's exciting. It's just, ugh. This is how I feel. This is how this game makes me feel. With every map sort of feeling the same way, with every map having the same base, jump here, jump there, dig through this, don't dig through that, and if you mess up, just rewind, do you really want to play through 100 levels of that? I certainly don't. I am already bored with this. And for the price point that they're asking, $15, I can't recommend this game. If somebody out there enjoys this, then perfectly fine, you know, whatnot. But let's look at this right here. I should be able to jump up here, but I can't. It is not only a limited issue in the design, of how the game platforms, but also how the game has been levelly designed. It only wishes you to go exactly where it is. If you find a point where you should be able to jump up on, but they are not anticipated for it, they will not let you. You're very limited in the controlling. You easily fall into pits, you have no movement control when you're falling, you have no capability to sway yourself to jump through cracks onto another ledge. You are completely at the mercy of a very poor linear physics based game. It's just quite frustrating. The whole purpose of you being here is to collect gems, and I have no clue as to how many gems I need to collect, why I really should be bothered collecting these gems. I mean, they tell you there's a little story before, oh, you need to collect gems for the owner of a mine. If I'm doing all this work, going through all this place to collect gems, why don't I just leave as well? It's not enough to compel me, to grab me, and it never really takes you in and furthers your cause and grabs you even more as you're playing. It's a very limited, in its vision and its mechanics. You can dig through one surface, but you can't dig through another. It refuses to allow you to actually create paths within a map to suit what you want to do. I can only use certain objects. I can only go through the way they want to. It has a great opportunity here to allow a sort of puzzling with danger and risk of failure, but there is no risk of failure. There is no danger, and there is no capability to find an item that you need through multiple ways. And you say, okay, well that doesn't make sense, because if I'm able to dig everywhere, won't that just break the basis of the game? And I say no, because it comes down to vision. If you have implemented into the game a mechanic where there are mines, or there are spikes, or there's spiky balls, and you dig underneath one of these, or you dig into one of these, and they blow up, then you die. 
it's really just comes down to hey explore as you want dig as you want but know what there's going to be consequences for that and you can see those consequences this adds a little a level of depth do i go the way they suggest or do i try to find my own way and make the game my own and that's what matters you know it's not about hey here i am going to play this game as they intended no you need to make it my own I need to feel like I relate to the game and I am making progress and what I'm doing matters. And by doing such, I feel I own the game, I own the actions, and I own the decisions, and I'll be repelled to play even more. It's simply just do it this way or don't do it at all. And this idea is repeated again and again and again and again. So if you are interested in this game, ladies and gentlemen, if this is a game that actually does repel to you and call to you, my only recommendation is that you wait for it to go on sale. Thank you everybody for watching. I have been Socio Psycho and I'll see you next time.